little goldies and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video uh, welcome back to Sharon's sanctuary so we're going to be doing a color and gab today and so what I thought we would do we're gonna do something a little different today um, I've actually done a video like this before but it's been quite a long time so what I thought we would do today, now I have this book here, this is called More Happy Monsters, and this is a more of a volume two in this series. There is one called Happy Monsters, and there, um, but this one is the More Happy Monsters. And so let me go ahead and just give you guys just a little bit of a flip through of this book before we actually get started. So this is this series is by Eric De Prince, and this is more of a, of a kid's coloring book, but um, I thought this would be perfect for what we're going to do today. and really great for being able to color this on camera with you guys. So it says more fun coloring books by Eric de Prince and this is what it says on the back. Um, so it's just got his website and stuff um, and this just has like different other different coloring books that he has. So let me just kind of give you guys just a quick little flip through of this book. Now you're going to see that these pictures are very very simple. Um, it is on Create Space paper, but these pictures are really simple. Um, they're not hard to do at all, but I thought what I thought we would do today, um, now these are perfect for being able to do these on camera with you guys, being that I am visually impaired and I need the bigger spaces to do with you guys on camera. So what I thought we would do um, with this picture today is we're just gonna, um, we're gonna make it super cute. And so we're gonna just so, uh, and I'll show you the design that we're gonna do today, but I'll just so the page and we're gonna use some watercolors on him, him or her. <laughs> we're gonna use some watercolors and then we're gonna do an acrylic paint background as soon as we're done with the picture. So we're gonna do it with watercolors and then we're going to, um, we're gonna put some uh, pencil over the top of it and we are also going to do an acrylic paint background with maybe some Posca pen. So we're gonna, even though these pictures are real simple, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna do our best to make it super cute today. So, um, we're just going to just give a little flip through of this book. Now, this is volume two. There is a volume one, but um, I was kind of attracted to these cute little pictures in here. So, I mean, they're super simple, but they are cute. Whoops. They're super simple, but they really are cute. And some of them, they're all simple, but there's some that are going to be a little harder than others. Okay, so that is on Create Space Paper. So what we're going to do today is we're going to, and I'm going to show you the design that we're going to go ahead and do. Um, I thought we would go ahead and do, you know, let's just go ahead and work on, um, we're going to go ahead and work on this, this first page here. He's got, he's kind of like a one eye, we could make him a purple people eater, huh? <laughs> We make we may make him a little purple people eater. What do you guys say? So we have this cute little one-eyed monster. We can make him all different colors, but maybe we'll make him a purple people eater, huh? So what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna gesso this page. So I've got some wax paper here. We're going to put it in between my page just to protect our next image. And we're just gonna get it situated and I'm going to just kind of fold it down just a little bit so we don't get anything on any of the other pages like so okay so we're gonna try to do an acrylic paint background on him there's not gonna be too much going on because the picture uh, actually almost reaches the edge here but we're going to just sew this thing we are going to just sew this this, uh, this page and then we'll add some watercolor and we'll just see what we can do with this guy so I'm gonna grab one of my just sew brushes okay so let me just make sure that we are in frame. There we go. Um, I'm going to just move that just a touch. Okay, so we're going to just go ahead and just sew this page right here and I will show you what I do. So um, I did make a video like this some time back, but I have this Art Basics Clear Gesso. Uh, there we go. I have this Art Basics Clear Gesso and what we're going to do is we're going to apply an even coat over this picture and I'm shaking it up a little bit because sometimes like it, sometimes this stuff settles so just to kind of make it so that whatever parts in there kind of get um, dispersed in there we're going to shake it up so I'm going to oh my goodness it's actually been a while since I've used this stuff so I'm having a hard time opening it oh 
Mm. Well, maybe we'll just sew the page. All right, guys, give me just a minute. I'm having a heck of a time opening this. Just give me a second and I will be right back. All right, everyone, we are back. I finally got this crazy thing open. Oof. All right, man, that was that was a job and a half. I'm telling you. Oh. I have some of it that kind of gummed up at the top. Eey. We're going to use this big paintbrush here and we're going to just, uh, whoops. Probably should get something a little smaller because that is not going to fit. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go ahead and use this brush and we're gonna go ahead and just gesso our page. Okay, so what we want to try to do with this is we're going to apply an even coat on this page and we're going to attempt to apply an even coat on this page. Because what we want to do is we want to cover our design so that we can, um, so that we'll be able to paint on this. Now the purpose of this is this kind of acts as like a sort of protective, sort of barrier protective layer um, so that the water will not seep through so much on the paper. It kind of acts in a way so that your water is not going to be totally absorbed into the page, like when you paint. Um, that way this will be able to give us um, a nice watercolor experience without us worrying about our paper being torn up. Because one thing about paper that is not watercolor paper is if you try to watercolor on paper that is not meant to be watercolored on, um, you stand a good chance of having your paper torn up. You could tear up your paper, um, you could damage it, the fibers in it could could uh, pill, and then it's gonna kinda, you could get holes in the paper. Um, the worst case scenario is you get holes in the paper or it starts to, the fibers start to come apart on you. And when you're trying to do a project, you do not want that to happen. So this gesso acts as a layer so that your paint actually just kind of sits on top of it and it's not gonna be absorbed as much into the fibers and it's gonna give you this nice, more of a protective layer. And you're not going to, you're not going to buckle or tear if your paper is bad. Now, you are going to have to be careful because this, um, you're gonna have to be careful because it is still very wet and it's gonna, um, it's fragile. So with the gesso on it until it dries, it's fragile. And so you're gonna have to be careful um, that um, you don't fold it over like I just did. Um, you want it to be very flat and you're gonna have to have it be flat as it dries. Um, that way you're gonna, that way you can put your, um, that way you can put your uh, mediums on it without um, without having too much difficulty with it. So I'm just gonna add just a little bit more at the top. And see, it just kind of folded over on me and I don't like that. Ay, 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 ay. So be very, very, very careful, guys. Um, don't do what I just did. <laughs> Do not do what I just did. So we're going to just get that flat again. I folded over that corner without realizing I did that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let this dry. This needs to dry before we actually do anything more with it. Okay, so we're going to just sit here and let this dry for a little while and I will be back when this is dry and we will start adding our paint. So I'm gonna clean out my brush. All right, everyone, we are back now. Um, we got our page gessoed, it is dry. Now let me just kind of show you um, what this kind of does. Now when you gesso your page, now you wanna be careful, don't do what I did and end up like folding it over. <laughs> you wanna make sure that it's kind of flat. Some people have taped it down, but um, sometimes when you gesso this, like like when it's wet, you're gonna see the lines kind of coming through on this side over here. Let me move back. You're gonna see that the lines kind of look like that they're bleeding through a little bit, but don't let that worry you because once it dries, that will clear up and you're not going to, you're gonna, you're not 
going to have faded lines or anything. You're still going to be able to see your lines. You just have to wait for it to dry. And just make sure you try to get it as flat as you can when you, when you gesso it and when you're trying to get it to dry. Um, and then you want to give it plenty of time to dry. That way you're, you're not going to... Um, that way you're not gonna be putting like wet on wet. And so let me just kind of show you what this does. Now, when you gesso it, it's gonna, you're not gonna have that, that paper sound when you flip the page, not like you would when you're, when you're, let me move this here. Not like you would when you're, when you're actually flipping pages like this because you're putting an extra layer on this. And so it feels like it's a little bogged down, which it's, this page is a lot heav heavier then your other pages are going to be, you know, because you've added that extra layer. But when you're working with paper like this, especially Create Space paper, um, you're going to be glad that you just sewed this because, um, as I was saying when I was doing this, you do not want to, you do not, you do not want to have your, um, you do not want to have your um, paper falling apart on you. And create space paper, it will definitely fall apart on you, especially if you use too much water on it. So you have to be careful. Um, I like to be safe. I like to be safe than sorry, and I will take that time to just sew my page because I think it is well worth it in the end. So let me just show you the materials that we're gonna use. So as I was saying, and I'm just kind of folding back my wax paper, I have some white paper underneath my page that way it doesn't just in case it does seep through although with gesso a lot of times it's not going to but you know it's better to take precautions so what we're going to use today is we're going to put some watercolor as a base and i have these kiritake um watercolor gambi gambi tamzai i think they're called and there's 36 colors in here let me undo it so there's 36 colors in here. Very, very pretty colors. So we're gonna be using this today for our base coat. And I haven't decided for the acrylic paint if we were going to use the um, Liquitex Basics or if I'm gonna get out my apple barrel paints. I just don't know. We'll get to that bridge when we get to it. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But for the pencil, um, I believe we're going to be using Prismacolor Scholars. I just got these in. These have barely, barely been touched except to spill them everywhere. So they are not very well organized right now because I did spill them and they went everywhere, but we will deal with those later. So what we're going to do probably in this session, I don't know how long it's going to take us, but we're going to put down our watercolor. And I have a whole slew of these water brushes here. Some of them are from Arteza. I have Pentel. And then I have a Zig Detailer, which I think I'm going to start out with the Zig Detailer because that seems to be my favorite one. So we, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this monster two different colors. So I think we're going to do his legs and like his hands and stuff one color, and then his whole body and stuff another color. So I think we're gonna make us a little blue monster. Let's make us a blue monster, okay? So now, just as a little warning here, and I know I have said this many, many times before in my videos, I am doing this with the visual impairment. So this means that I have to get close to my work so I can see what I'm doing. So pardon me if my head gets in the way, I try to keep that to a minimum, but that cannot be helped sometimes. So I'm going to just use my water brush and we're going to get started with doing our blue paint. And I have my little tabletop easel here. And I think this is going to save a lot of wear and tear on my my back and my neck and everything which is going to be awesome so another thing is when you just sew your page your paint is going to go a lot further before you have to actually wet it down and, and get more paint so i'm going to just put this here beside me and i'm going to just make sure that i am in frame okay so i'm going to move that down just a tad okay i hope i'm not getting everybody seasick i do apologize um, sometimes with doing this on my tabletop easel, I have to kind of move the camera just a little bit, put it at a different angle, but that is okay. We can certainly deal with that. Okay, so how has everybody been doing? I hope everybody is doing well. Um, what has been going on here? Well, quite a lot, actually. Um, I'm trying to think when last time I did one of these color and gabs. I know it's been a while. So, um, 
I've been also doing live streaming, which um, some of you may have seen that. I'm going to try to live stream on a regular basis on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon central time. Um, I believe that would be one o'clock Eastern. So if you want to watch me live stream, catch me Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon central daylight savings time. Definitely do that, would love to see you. And what I've been doing in my streams, I kind of tested things out just to make sure that it was going to work out well, is I've been just doing flip throughs of, of some of my coloring books, which seems to work out well. A lot of you guys seem to really like that. So um, I think that's what we're gonna do. Now, if you want me to do like face-to-faces, um, I can I can do that too. Like um, I could grab some crocheting and we can just kind of sit and chat. I would record it on my phone and just kind of be by my computer so I can read comments and stuff. But I can certainly grab some crocheting or something and we can do some face face to faces. Not a problem. Um, I'm probably not going to color on my streams though because I know for a fact that should I if I were to color on my streams, I would have a heck of a time trying to keep up with the chat and. I want to kind of make it as easy for me as I possibly can, as easy for me and as less annoying for you guys. And also, um, YouTube, I guess, has been messing around. I've kind of tested some streams, like I said, and people have reported that it's blurry, you know, that it's kind of pixelated and stuff. So um, I was told to let that if you hit the gear button on your video and change the quality of it, that kind of helps with that pixelation. So um, when we stream next time, we're going to, um, we'll see how that goes. Um, so anyway, what's been going on here? Well, since I last made one of these videos now, um, I have made haul. I, I did make a haul video, which I showed some goodies and stuff that I did get. So you guys can go on my channel and watch that if you have not seen that already. But um, we've been actually kind of busy. We've been we've been pretty busy, really. We've been um, we've been going up to the Apple Store quite a bit lately because um, we've been taking. Um, they offer classes. Um, oh, I don't know if I can. Hmm. I'm going to try to pick that up. I didn't think that this paint would go over that line, but it did. Okay, I'm just going to try to pick up that blue with my finger. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I did it again. Like I said, we've been going to their classes at the Apple Store. And um, we... I've been taking their classes. They offer classes um, on computers, on recording videos, taking pictures, you name it. They have they have classes on on pretty much anything Apple that you can think of. So we've been, you know, we and it's it's uh, free courses. So we've been taking those, and um, we went up there quite a bit last week to the Apple Store to do their classes, or some of their classes. They offer so many of them. There's so many more we wanna take, but there's only so much time in the day and only so much time when we can get up there because it is a bit of a hike. It is over an hour's drive up there. So it is a hike for us to go to the Apple Store. But it's worth it because um, there's so much, uh, so much stuff that they teach you and that you can learn it's actually quite nice. So we've been doing that and it was kind of funny because, oh my gosh, funny story time here now. But um, one day when we were up there and when we were getting ready to leave, um, now, like I said, I am visually impaired. So I have a guide dog. I have a leader dog and his name is Alexander Graham Bell. Um, for those of you that are new to my channel, um, he is a golden retriever. We call him Alex. And you know what, I could have, I could have, uh, you know what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm just going to do this part, part way blue here and then I think I'm going to make his fingers another color. So I'm going to stop right there with the blue on his arm. Um, so anyway, funny story time, but we were getting ready to leave and you know how like if you've ever been to an Apple store, they have the, um, 
the they have the um, glass that that's on the walls you know and so Alex you know like when we were getting ready to leave you know he must have thought that there was nothing there <laughs> like you know there was a door or something there or you could just kind of walk out of there like he didn't realize that there was something there I guess and so we were getting ready to leave and he bangs like right into <laughs> poor guy he banged right into the glass wall and he um, it started him more than anything like he didn't get hurt he's fine you know you know we made sure he was fine that and so his nose like he banged his nose right into that glass wall and uh you know after <laughs> after we made sure he was okay well then my husband got a kick out of it too. like he thought he thought it was the funniest thing ever so he started laughing he started laughing and he took to calling alex bonk okay i think i'm gonna have to take I think I'm gonna have to take some black and just kind of go over his mouth right there because I'm getting it. I'm not, I kind of painted over his mouth, but I can take a micron pen and I can fix that. So anyway, he took to calling Alex Bonk because he banged into the, he banged into the glass wall. Poor guy. And so, I mean, you know, after we made sure he was okay, you know, it was kind of funny. In a way, it was funny. But he wasn't none the worse for wear. He is okay. He is okay, so not to worry. He is fine. But, um, so one time when we were up there is when I got some of my goodies. Because I showed you in my haul some Apple goodies, the, some goodies I got from Apple. Um, so yep, we got some goodies from Apple and some edumacation. <laughs> they really do have good classes up there and, um, it's nice. Like if, if you're, if you're an Apple person and if you don't realize that they have classes up there, um, just go to Apple's website and it's on, um, today at Apple or something like that, or, um, yeah, to, today on Apple or today at Apple or something like that. So you can go on the website and, and look for different classes like in your area and see what you can take because it is a lot of fun and I would recommend it. So that's what we've been doing. Um, we did that quite a bit last week. This week has actually been pretty quiet really, um, for the most part. Um, we've just like we took we took a weekend we took all weekend on Saturday and Sunday and um, we have uh, like quite a lot of we had like quite a lot of like old paperwork and stuff so we just took to um, just kind of cleaning out our desk and some other stuff I, th I think I am gonna have to I keep painting over his mouth um, we just kind of took to um, cleaning out some of our um, our paperwork and just getting rid of some stuff that we didn't need anymore. I think I'm just gonna have to get kind of close up here for just a minute so I can see. So we uh, we just kind of cleaned some of that stuff out over the weekend and so we're glad of that because it was just taking up too much space. So that needed to go. That definitely needed to go. Um, so um and over the fourth like we didn't really do anything over the fourth that was i did my first um stream on youtube on the fourth which thank you to everybody who joined me that day but we didn't really do anything um we didn't really have to because our neighbors <laughs> our neighbors shot off plenty of fireworks we don't do anything but we uh you know but the neighbors like had their fireworks going pretty much all night so it was quite a bit annoying really it was a bit annoying but at least it didn't keep us up like past midnight we still were able to go to bed we still were able to go to bed which was nice and go to sleep <laughs> which was nice. Um, and 
And I watched, um, I watched a Chalene stream both on Friday and Sunday. And I watched Anne on Sunday from A Colorful Life. I watched Grace on Sunday and I watched Kate's Coloring Haven a couple of times. I watched her stream a couple of times and that was fun. Um, I haven't really been coloring much off camera because um, with trying to just get old paperwork cleaned up out of here and just kind of doing our thing, um, I haven't really had much time to do much coloring off camera. So um, I'm hoping to remedy that because like I have so many whips. <laughs> I mean, I don't have, I don't think I have as many as some people do, but I have quite a few whips that I really need to finish up. And so I do want to work on those. Definitely want to work on those. Um, what else? What else, you guys? I can't really say too much. Like, we haven't really had too much Lions Club stuff to do because, uh, being that it's over the summer, we don't meet during the summer. And, uh, my term as, um, trustee for our Lions Foundation is over now. So, I don't have that to go to anymore because that term ended. So, in a way, um, the schedule will lighten up, but in a way not, because I still have, I, I will still have things to do. You know, it's not like I'm not going to have anything to do, because that's not going to be the case. I still will have plenty to do, and to keep me out of trouble, <laughs> or as I sometimes say, help me find new trouble to get into. <laughs> But I guess maybe it's a good kind of trouble because, uh, you know, the Lions Club is a worthy cause. It definitely is a worthy cause. So I'm using this kind of like um, sky-ish blue kind of color. Um, these Kiritake watercolors are Japanese. This is a Japanese watercolor. And I've seen them on several different channels, mainly um, mainly more of like crafting channels, like um, people who do stamping or actual watercolors, you know, not just in coloring books, but you know, they actually make a, a watercolor painting. I've seen these. I've seen these on like different crafting channels, um, scrapbooking channels and stuff. I've seen that. Um, what else? Um, I don't know if I've ever seen these on any coloring channels. I don't know, to be quite honest. I'm not sure. All right, I'm going to have to move the book just a little bit so I can get to this another part here. So just excuse me while I do that. I need to be able to see what I'm doing. I think I love this tabletop easel. I'm using this little tabletop easel to do this on, and I think I love it. I really do. I think I love it. Um, I've got it at the lowest position right now, though, because I don't want this, these watercolors running. That I don't want. I don't want the watercolors to run. So I'm doing this at the lowest possible angle, but it's got it's getting it high enough that. I can see it quite a bit better, and I'm hoping that my head isn't in the way too much. Oh, whoopsie. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, I don't want to make you guys see sick, so sorry about that. Um, but when I get my pencils out, I'm going to, um, I am going to, um, I'm going to raise it just a little bit. Uh, so, what's everybody been doing? The age-old question, what are you all coloring? What have you guys been reading? Um, I started reading, and this is not my first time reading this, but I am reading, um, Brave New World. This is by Aldous Huxley. This is a very, very classic, um, science fiction story. And... 
Definitely a, a classic science fiction story. All right, guys, I have to adjust. I do have to adjust. Just give me a sec. Okay, I think I'm just gonna have to do it like this. Okay, so that is an old science fiction story that I have been reading. Um, it's called Brave New World by Aldous Huxley. And I have read it before. I have also heard it dramatized on an old time radio show called the CBS Radio Workshop, I think it was. And that was done, I think, in the 50s. Maybe mid-50s or something like that. So um, I have heard it dramatized that way. But I'm, I'm reading the actual book, which I've read it. I read it, I think I want to say maybe about 10 years ago, I actually read the book. And so I thought it would behoove me to do it again because I was just in the mood to go ahead and do that. So I am doing that. So, but yeah, what have you guys been reading and what have you guys been coloring? Do you guys have a favorite coloring book right now that you've been working out of? And another question, um, how many whips do you guys think that you have? Whips are works in progress. How many do you guys think that you have at the moment? I say I probably have maybe seven or eight. I don't have nearly, nearly as many as some people do, but um, I think I have about seven or eight whips. With one more being in the mix because I don't know that I'm going to finish this little guy off camera here, but we're going to do our best. We will try to do our best to um, finish him maybe in, maybe in two parts or something like that. We'll see. Okay. I need to just kind of darken up this color. So I'm going to put down, like I said, watercolors and we're going to use our pencils to um, do some accents and blending and shading and stuff on here. But I wanna to try to get most of him done with watercolors. I figured that because these guys are so kind of simple, you know, that um, that it might be kind of cool to just kind of, you know, do something different with these guys because um, these are actually quite simple to do, um, these little monsters. So um, I'm going to, might have to fill up my water brush. So I have to get kind of close to see what I'm doing on these little ears. So I'm going to just kind of do a little bit on the ears because I want to make these ears, um, you know, some different colors and stuff. So, excuse me while I do this. I have to get kind of close so I can see what I'm doing. So if I go out of the lines a little bit, like I'm not gonna worry about it too much because like what I get out of the lines on, um, the acrylic paint is probably gonna cover up. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Okay, so I'm going to just come up here to do this part, so pardon my head. I'm sorry guys, I'm sure it's in the way, but I'm trying to get close so I can get into these little spaces right there with my brush. And I will be out of the way in a minute. Okay. One more, one more little area here. Okay. Oh, my watch is capping me on the wrist. Um, we've got our blue down. And I think I'm going to grab, um, I think I'm going to grab another color. And I think we're going to color like these circles here with that, with our secondary color, as well as the ears and the rest of our monster. So I'm going to clean off my brush and I think I'm going to fill up my water brush again because I'm 
running out of water. All right, guys, we are back. Now I think we're gonna go ahead and I think we're gonna make him, I think we're gonna do a red color um, to go with our blue. I was thinking, all right, we could make him a purple people eater, but I changed my mind on that. I think we're gonna go with red and blue. I think that would look nice together. So I'm going to come over here by his ears and I'm going to just color this part in here. I will get this part done first and then um, we'll move on to his body. So I'm going to just do this part here. And so excuse me while I get kind of close, I need to get into, see these, these uh, little parts here, but we will move out when we get ready to do his body. And then I'll go over and just kind of fix up um, where, uh, where I might have gone over the lines a little bit. So just give me a moment. Once we get done with these little parts, then it will be smooth the sailing from here on out. But I just kind of have to get in here. So pardon me while I get close. So, um... I know this book really hasn't been seen before. This is more of a kid's coloring book, like I said, but um, I thought these were super cute. And I think that these are, this is something that I find easy to do with you guys on camera, um, just because um, just because there are some bigger spaces and I don't have to get as close. I mean, I still have to get close for some parts of it, but I don't have to get as close as what we would, uh, what we would normally see before. And I'm making a mess. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to pick this up. I might have to go back in with our blue uh, and fix that. Uh, you know what, like I think the acrylic paint will go over that, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let me just go back in here with this red. Okay. Yeah, I might have to go back in with the blue and fix this. I might have to do that, but I want to go ahead and finish up his body first before we do that. And I'm going to grab the tip here on this ear. I'm not very good with watercolors, but this is why we play and this is why we practice. Okay, so I'm gonna fix I'm gonna fix that up a little bit later. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to color uh, the rest of our monster. Ah! Oh, crap! All right, we're going to try this again. Oh my gosh! Like, oh, I made a mess with my watercolors. <laughs> meaning that they spilled everywhere. I guess the lesson learned on this is do not have them tilted up, right? Don't tilt your watercolors because they will spill. They will spill and then you are not going to be happy. Okay. You are not going to be happy when your watercolors spill, so don't tilt up your watercolors. So like I said, we're gonna color the other places in this monster, this red color as our secondary color. And I will go back in here with pencils and just kind of, you know, fix up any defining lines that I might need to do. So um, I'm trying to just get in here with this and um, hopefully it's not gonna run everywhere. I hope. I hope not. And then if I go out of any lines on the outside, the acrylic paint will take care of that. Okay, so I'm just coming up here to get the smaller spaces and I'll go back in and fix up any color or any mess off camera. I'm going to tilt the book up just a little bit so that I can see here. 
because I need to get to these circles right there, as we can see. And don't tilt your watercolors because you are not going to be a happy camper. Must I say it again? Don't tilt your watercolors. <laughs> I'm, oh my gosh, like, I have never had that happen before, um, but, you know, like with any other watercolors, these aren't really glued down to the, the container that they're in, so you have to kind of be careful and practice what I say, not what I do. <laughs> oh, man. And I think I'm gonna have to go back in with the blue again and just kind of cover, um, go over some white spaces that that I think I might have missed. But I will do that at another time. I have to wait till it dries all the way, I'm thinking, because I don't wanna put too much water on it. Even with the gesso, you still have to be careful with this, this paper because it's not very thick paper to begin with. And, uh, um, it's definitely not made for watercoloring, but the gesso definitely, definitely does help. Definitely helps. Okay. So whenever in doubt, when you want to watercolor, just gesso your page. Um, some paper may not take to it as well, um, or you may not like the feel of it on, on some paper. But, you know, if ever in doubt, definitely just so your page because you don't want to tear up your paper. You really don't. Especially like if your fibers come apart or, you know, you get holes in the paper or something, you don't want to have that happen. So just be mindful of how much water you put on this. And as I said, whenever in doubt, just so your page because that is a very, very helpful trick to do. All right, I'm gonna turn the book back this way again. Okay, and we're gonna color the rest of our monster this red color. And I'm just gonna make sure that we are in frame for this. So I'm gonna point the camera down just a tad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna color the hands and the feet and the little, that I think is his eye. That, I think, is his eye. Like, he's got a big eye, doesn't he? What we could do is we could color... I think we'll color... I, I think we're going to treat it all as one big eye. And maybe we'll give him a green eye. Yeah, how, how does a green eye sound? I think a green eye sounds good. So we'll color the rest of his body red. I'm going to come down over here with this color and we're going to grab the hands or the little fingers or claws or whatever you want to call it on this monster so we definitely have i was hoping that the that these blue and the red wouldn't run together and that's exactly what we're getting which is good I mean, because I think if it ran together, we would get, um, we would get purple. We'd get like a purple mix right there, but um, we want to color, make sure that we get it red on the hands or on the claws or whatever, whatever it is that you, we want to call them. Okay, we'll come over here and do this as well. I'm going to make us a little defining line right there. Looks like this claw is a little bit bigger. This monster really isn't very symmetrical, but that's okay. Now, if we really want to get creative, we could actually get some black paint and maybe kind of do the tips of his fingers or his claws black. Um, I don't know though, because I think we're gonna, I think I'm gonna put black acrylic paint as a background on him so I don't want to make his his uh the tippy tips of his claws black we may pick another color for that we'll see you know this color this blue color kind of turns out more like a turquoise doesn't it I wanted to say it was sort of a sky blue but it's 
coming out more turquoise, I think, isn't it? Looks more like a turquoise. What we could do, and this part, I think I got blue on this part here. Um, this acrylic paint will cover that up, so I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I kind of made a blob right there, but we'll be able to color, cover that up with acrylic paint. So no need to get alarmed on that. So what I'm gonna do, I think what we'll do, oops. First of all, we'll make a mess. <laughs> Second of all, we're gonna color this fur down here red. And what I think I am gonna do though is um, maybe we'll pick another color for the tippy 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 tips of of the fingers and the toes as soon as this paint dries. Now I kind of went out of that line a little bit right there with that blue, but again that acrylic paint should cover it up. So I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. because we'll be able to fix it. We'll definitely be able to fix it. So I'm just gonna, what I'm doing is kind of, I'm kind of making like a defining line with this red. That way, hopefully I won't go past this part with the red, okay? Now I could have gotten a bigger brush to do this, but I really like this Zig Detailer. I think it works out really well. Um, Again, don't tilt your watercolors. I just, I now have them just kind of sitting next to me on the table, not up on my easel here. It was easier for me to get to when it was on the easel, but I just don't want them to fall over again because now my colors are out of order. <laughs> my colors are definitely out of order. So I got some splotches just kind of on the outside of this, like right here and kind of around here, but the acrylic paint will cover that up. So I'm not worrying about that. I'm not gonna worry about that. Easily fixable. Easily fixable. So, um, what else to talk about? Okay, so, you guys can tell me, you know, since you heard my watercolors fall over, you guys can tell me what kind of goofy things have you done while you've been coloring? Like what kind of goofy spills have you guys had? You know, what, what, uh, what kind of, what kind of, what kind of spills have you had with your materials and what kind of goofy things have you done while you've colored? Um, another goofy thing that I've done and, uh, my husband laughs so hard at me <laughs> and says, what a dumb move. But what I did one time was I had my cappuccino here and I was um, doing, um, I was cleaning out a, uh, I think I was, yeah, I was doing, I was doing acrylic paint swatches or something like that, or I was doing a background or something. And I spilled, um, or not spilled, but I, what I did was I, um, I dipped my brush into the cappuccino rather than the water that I was using for my, to clean out my brush. So instead of, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go fill up my Zig Detailer because I'm running out of water. So just give me a sec. So instead of dipping it in the water to clean my brushes, I dipped it in the wrong cup and dipped it in my cappuccino. Luckily, I didn't have that much cappuccino left over. <laughs> Luckily, I did not have that much cappuccino left over and um, so I didn't ruin too much of it, but I felt like a total, I felt like a total goofball. I did, I felt like a total goofball for that one. Felt like a total goofball for that one. It's like, no, not my cappuccino. <laughs> but yeah, um, so what kind of goofy things have you guys, what kind of goofy spills have you guys had and what kind of goofy things have you done while you've been, while you've colored? Tell me that. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Yes, I would love to hear that. 
I would absolutely love to hear about that. Um, so what has the weather been like where you guys are? Um, has it been a heat wave? We had a heat wave, but it is um, it has been dying out. It has been dying out, um, although it, it's a little warm here today, more humid than anything. It's more humid than anything today. So um, it's been, so we had the, we had the air off, but we, uh, we turned it back on because it was just, it was just too humid here without, uh, what I'm trying to do, I am actually trying to pick up some of this paint that got off of the, uh, that got off onto the, the, the uh, outside. So I am just trying to clean things up here just a little bit. Uh, but I don't know if I'm making more of a mess than anything. Um, the acrylic paint will cover most of this up, but I'm going to try to clean off as much as I can. I'm just trying to pat, I'm just trying to pat on on it, and just trying to clean some of the stuff up on the outside. just to make my life a little bit easier. Okay. So when you're doing this, just be careful if you have wet hands because I think that's what happened to me was my, my fingers were a little bit damp and I touched, I touched where I was painting. So just be kind of careful when you're doing this because um, you could, uh, you could move that paint around and then get it in places you don't want to get it. So just be kind of careful. But I will fix all of that up when I do this with acrylic paint. I'll fix it up. All right. So we're going to clean off this red and we're going to get him a green eye. Have you guys noticed that, like, when you do watercolors, have you guys noticed that, that some are harder to clean off than others? Have you guys noticed that sometimes? Because this red that I used, um, I'm going to run this under some water because this red that I used, um, it, it is sometimes hard to clean off. One thing with watercolor is it is a messy medium sometimes, so you, it's not like it is a clean medium, not like colored pencils are. <laughs> you're gonna, um, you're going to uh, find that wet medium, wet mediums are a little bit messier. Okay, that's pretty good, I guess. It's better than it was. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to take some green and we're gonna give him a green eye. Um, I think what we're gonna do is this part, um, I think part of this will leave white to like for his iris. But the other part I think we'll, we're gonna turn green. So we're going to just grab and make sure we don't spill. <laughs> Yep, I think I'll grab this one right here, this green. It's kind of a light green. So what I'm going to do, and I might have to fix this a little bit with a Posca pen, because I feel like, um, because I got some blue where I shouldn't have got that blue right there. 
and try to make this as even as we can get it. Oh, I could have given him a gold eye. Oh well. That's all right. We are just going to do what we're going to do. But I might have to take a Posca pen and just kind of go over that paint right there where I got out of the line. Uh, so we're almost done with our watercolor base, I think. I'm going to try to get it even so I, we don't have an uneven iris. That wouldn't be good, but we're going to do the best we can. Okay, so we'll let it dry and then I will have to grab a Posca pen. Um, clean up the black. I will put some highlights and stuff on the black part right there on that eye. Um, you know what I think we're gonna do just just because just because otherwise it's gonna look bad is we're gonna we're just gonna just cover that whole thing green. I think we're just gonna do that. It'll make my life easier. We're just gonna cover the whole thing green. And just say to heck with it. So I'm just making some small circles with my brush and just kind of going over this a little bit. And I might have to take a micron pen and just kind of go over the black lines a little bit because I'm getting it everywhere. I think with this easel being just a little bit tilted up too doesn't help. It might be running just a little bit. So I will clean up what I need to clean up. But for now, we're going to do this. We're going to do it this way. Okay. Grab a little bit more green. One thing with watercolor is you may have to clean up a few things. Acrylics tend to just kind of stay in one place, whereas watercolors, they, they tend to run, but that's what watercolors do. That's just the nature of the medium, is that they will run. But we will fix it. Nothing to get alarmed over. We will fix it. We'll go over this with pencil and shade. We'll do some shading on it and, and so forth. Okay. All right, so I am going to let this dry and probably off camera, um, off camera I'm going to um, just kind of clean up some areas that got a little bit messy we're gonna let this dry and I'm gonna clean up some areas that got messy. And I think in our next part, we're gonna come back and we're going to add, uh, I think we're gonna add some acrylic paint and we'll go over it with some pencil. So this may be done in like two or three different parts, but here is what the watercolor part looks like thus far. Messy and all. <laughs> messy and all but this is what we have so I'm going to go ahead and end this part here we'll come back next time and we will try to finish this guy up either in part two or we will make a part three out of it we'll see what happens so you all have a great day don't forget to hit that like button that helps my channel out quite a bit and by hitting that like button it gets this video out there um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. While you are at it, hit the bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded.
Leave a comment and tell me what you think. You all have a great day and we will see you in the next part. Okay, bye my little goldies.